Hello everyone and welcome to this video. This video will be on my Dell Dimension 466i. I've had this in my collection for quite a while and it's one of the favourite pieces that I actually own. I bought it originally a couple of years ago and as you know I do like to buy things quite cheap. I don't often like to pay out on things but this was one of the rare occasions where I did I did put a quite a higher bid in and I did win it but it's still only £70. It did come with the original delivery boxes and also the monitor that goes with it, the CRT. Unfortunately that's broken now. It actually died only a couple of weeks ago. It won't um it won't power on anymore, it seems to flicker before turning itself back off, so I'm not sure what's wrong with that. I'm not very good with CRTs, I'm not qualified to start opening them up, so hopefully one day I'll find someone who could fix that for me. But this video it's just going to be about the computer itself, what I've done to it. It's not quite the same as it was when I originally got it. I've added a CD drive and a sound card and it's also had a processor upgrade. So let's take it open and we'll have a bit of a tour inside of it. So if we start at the front you can see the Dell Dimension logo. It's got an Intel inside sticker as well. And there's the CD drive and the floppy drive with the nice power switch and the Dell logo alongside the model number. Now you may notice this large gap between your drives and that was a, a, a bit of a concern for me because I did have to cut this open to fit the CD drive. There wasn't actually a removable slot cover there. But I have looked online at the ones that did have one and they also have this gap so I guess that was just how, how it was designed. Moving around to the back, we've got the power supply, which is of course a proprietary model. We've got PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse, two serial ports, a parallel port and a video port, as well as the sound card, which I've added. So let's open it up and take a look inside. Now the case does open up very easily. There's just four screws on the sides, two on either side. That's all that holds the top cover on. And then you can just, it can be quite stiff, but you can just pull it. There you go, it can be quite stiff. You can just pull it and it will just slide straight off, revealing the inside. So to start off with, here is that power supply. I did say it's proprietary, but I think that's more the size of it rather than the actual specifications. I believe it still just has a standard AT connector alongside, of course, some Molex connectors and a floppy connector. Now, to add the uh, CD drive, I did have to 3D print myself some mounts because obviously this would have come with some rails to mount a CD drive. I didn't have those, so I had to improvise and I've made it. It fits quite nicely. Obviously there's the gap which I showed earlier on, but if you look at pictures from models which did come with a drive, they also had that gap, so not too worried about that anymore. As we move it around, you can see the sound card that I've installed. That is an ESS audio drive, good old reliable model. I have got better ISA cards which I could install, but this is it's reliable and it has quite a good sound and I also wanted to try out the ESS FM which I know isn't used on many games but I did want to see if there was any I could try out on Beam Hospital being one of those. The sound card uses the ES186AF chip from ESS which is very well supported and we can easily get drivers for that from Vogon's drivers. There's the Dallas real-time clock that is a a newer one that I had to change over. I will eventually put a modded one in there. But for now, this one is still, it still holds a charge, so that's good enough. Coming across, you can also see the video chips for the VGA. This one's from Cirrus Logic. I think there's one megabyte of memory attached to it, which is more than enough for our DOS games. And of course, the SIS chipset. And also we do have 
external cache if you can see it under the drives which is nice to have of course and then the star of the show the intel overdrive just turn that around this is a dx4 pr100 uh, clock triple chip running at 100 megahertz that replaced the 66 megahertz dx2 that was in here and that's just a straight swap with the overdrive being able to handle the 5 volts that the motherboard is giving to it and that's improved the performance not a, not a massive amount but definitely definitely a lot better than the dx2 that was in there coming around to the memory there is two slots but there's a 16 megabyte module in there at the moment I haven't actually been able to get any other modules to work in their second slot, but that's not too important because of course 16 megs is more than enough for any DOS titles, anything I'm going to be running anyway. The hard drive is tucked away under the CD drive and a floppy drive. It is quite difficult to get in and out, you have to remove some screws and you have to remove all the drives above it as well, so it is a bit of a pain to change in and out. The one that I've got in there, it, it works fine, but it does have quite loud bearings in it, so it does whine a little bit. But I do prefer having a proper mechanical drive because I miss the clicking sounds. I know obviously a SD card or a CF card would make things easier in some respects, but I would miss the clicking sounds. So for now, I'm going to keep the hard drive in. So what I'm going to do now is slide the top cover back on and plug all the peripherals in and then I'm going to be installing Windows 3.11 the official Dell discs I don't believe there's anything different about these than a standard Windows 3.11 install but I guess I'll find out or maybe not even because I've never actually used Windows 3.11 before I went straight from DOS to Windows 95 so it will be an experience for me while I make this video That one was stubborn. So I do apologise for the next part of this video, the audio will have that hard drive whining sound in the background. I will see if I can remove some of it in the editing, but if not, I'm sorry that's still there. So let's start off with disc 1. I guess we just insert it and we'll probably type setup or install, let's have a look. setup it is. While that's loading I will just show you. I'm using this Microsoft keyboard, obviously PS2. Quite a trusty old keyboard, it's quite large but it just works on everything. And I'm also using this IntelliMouse from Microsoft. The good thing about this is it is PS2 compatible even though it's a USB optical mouse and that makes makes using a mouse on older computers much easier being optical. I don't think anybody's really got nostalgia for arguing with mouse balls. So where are we now? Set up Windows, press enter. I guess we'll go with an express setup. I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but this floppy drive is actually quite quiet. Definitely had some far louder ones in the past. I've probably already sped some parts of it up already, but if I haven't, I'll just explain now. I definitely will speed some parts of this up 
many of you have probably seen these screens before and don't need to see them again. And I'm guessing it's going to take more than a couple of minutes. Just crossing those fingers that all these discs still work. I do have backup ones. I actually have a whole other set of these and DOS 6.22 still sealed, which I posted on Twitter the other day. But I think it was a fairly clear vote that I should not open them. So let's hope I don't have to as we insert disc two. So far so good. Who hasn't missed that hard drive crunching sound? For me that is a big nostalgia hit to hear that hard drive working. Well we've made it this far. mouse isn't working yet. Easy enough to use the keyboard. Something I'm not sure everybody knows, I'm guessing most of you will, but if you hold Alt and press the letter that is underlined, you will select that option with a keyboard. So that if you haven't got a mouse plugged in, that can save you a lot of messing around with the tab button. So I think we're nearly done now. Amazingly that went through all of those discs without a single problem. It seemed to skip disc nine. Now, I've never installed this before, so I don't know why that is, or if there's anything important on there, but we seem all right so far. I guess, so we'll go continue. Okay, so. I think we need to, that's the CD drive. Oh dear, I hope we haven't crashed it here. Perhaps if I insert the CD and hit retry it might make that happy. Okay. The disc that I inserted was actually a Windows 2000 setup disk. Tutorials, who needs those? 
your Windows Pro Work Groups 3.11 is now set up. Remove any floppy drives. Uh, I haven't seen anything about those proposed changes, so I'm not quite sure what we mean by that. Let's return to DOS. There we go. So it did say it wanted us to restart. DOS is loaded up as you would expect, so let's type win. Oh. That's not what I was expecting. So I actually stopped recording there, and all I did was go into the Windows directory and then type win. I'm pretty sure when I've seen other YouTubers do that, they could just type it from any directory, which is a bit weird. Perhaps someone will tell me down in the comments what I need to do to get that working. Uh, no mouse and I didn't hear any sounds. I'm not sure if I was supposed to, so I guess now I need to work out how to install the mouse drivers and the sound drivers for Windows 3.11. So there was another cut there. I did change to the Windows directory and typed win to get Windows to run, but I couldn't get my mouse to work. So I have gone and grabbed an old trusty serial mouse and that's working fine. So. Someone will have to tell me if that's something to do with drivers or if that is expected behaviour. That mouse normally works in DOS programs, SimCity 2000 and the Settlers and all the other games. So it's a bit, little bit confusing. But now we're in and we have a mouse so we can take a look around. Obviously, as I said, I've not used Windows 3.1 before, so I don't know what I'm looking at at all. So I guess firstly, I need to try and see if we have the sound working. And I don't really know where I'm going to look for that. This isn't as intuitive as Windows 95 ever was. So now that I have got this set up into Windows, I'm not really sure what to do next. I might leave that for another video exploring Windows 3.11, I might go and watch some other people's videos on it because right now I'm looking at the screen and it's all rather, oh, see, <laughs> it's all very different to me. I'm not sure really if anyone wants to see someone bumbling around trying to figure out what's what, probably be irritating a few people who are screaming at their screen telling me to do this or click that, so I'll probably explore it a little bit off camera and then come back if I've got more managed to get my head around it get the sound set up and see what else there is so I did find out how to change the wallpaper at least and there was free included from Dell this is the least obnoxious of all of them so I've gone with this one for now I'm guessing that I'm gonna to have to install Windows drivers for the sound card so I'll leave that for now I'm just wondering if I launch one of my DOS games from Windows, if the sound will work in there or not. Let's find out. Okay, so the sound works in the DOS games, I guess. Windows 3.1 being a DOS program, it'll need setting up just for that. Here's my save game. Runs very nicely on this machine. A DX4 handles this game no problem. Off. Can we control the delete out of this one? Yep. The keyboard wasn't stuck, I still had my finger on it. F1 to continue. So there you have it, the Windows installation was a bit of a wash. Obviously it went really well. 
and all of the discs worked just fine in the end. Didn't take too long, but it's going to take me a little bit of time to have a look around with it and work out what it can do that I can't already do in DOS. Maybe I don't even need Windows, but I had those discs and I've really wanted to install them for a while, so now I've done it. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. If you did like it and you'd like to see more content on this machine, then tell me about it in the comments. Hit the like and hit the subscribe button. That'll be much appreciated. And I'll see you again in another video.